Hey guys, Easy Breezy here, and before this video begins, I would like to ask you guys if you could go ahead and subscribe to my brother's YouTube channel, the OG Kingler. Um, it'll be on screen right now, and it'll be in the description. Uh, he is starting up his own YouTube channel, and he's been uploading every day, and I'm actually very proud of him. Uh, he's putting in a lot of hard work into these videos and stuff like that, so if you guys could go ahead and uh, give him a subscribe if you could get him up to like 150 subscribers or something crazy like that Maybe I'll show you guys my elbow um, I'll do a good old elbow reveal or something like that um, And I might be on his channel from time to time if you guys could for an early eight month uh, Eight month early birthday present for me guys if you could go ahead and subscribe to him I would really really appreciate it and it would mean the world to him anyways I'm sorry guys this intro is long enough so here's another intro what is going on, all of you growers and smokers out there? Easy Breezy here, coming back for another mushroom video. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be making some bulk substrate here in bulk. Uh, we are going to be doing some, uh, uh, I think I got eight mono tubs here. And uh, we're just going to, I'm going to be showing you guys the recipe that I use and uh, how I do everything, how I make my, uh, my bulk substrate. Uh, anyways, this video is going to be on both of my channels with different titles. Um, because they're effectively the same type of grow. So if you haven't subscribed to my other channel, um, that goes for both channels. Uh, go ahead and do that. Easy Breezy Grows and Easy Breezy Mycology. Um, in case one of the channels get taken down, I got a backup. Anyways, oh, I forgot to, we're out of the clear. Uh, today is the 20th, so one of my strikes went away. So, uh, good days for that. I got one more strike that will go away next month, and then we will be... Pretty much back to business as usual. Um, and of course, this is all for educational and research purposes only. And with that, let's get into this video. So the first things that you're going to need for this uh, bulk recipe here is you're going to need a cocoa coir block. Now, this is a 10-pound block, and you can get it at Lowe's, I think I got this at. I think I got it at Lowe's, and it was like 20 bucks, I think. Uh, so it's a pretty good deal. Next, you're going to need, if I can just get rid of this real quick, you're going to need some... Uh, plaster of Paris here. We need this for the gypsum. This is about four cups. Um, sorry for those who don't live in my backward world country of USA. Uh, I'm not sure what the, the metrics would be on that. We got 25 cups here of vermiculite. And I just washed this, uh, this bucket here, this 10-gallon bucket. You can also buy this vermiculite in bulk at Lowe's too. And I want to say it was like 25 bucks, I think. I got it last year, and I'm still using it. So uh, it's definitely a good deal, definitely a good investment. So let me throw this. And I got the, the plaster of Paris right at Walmart, and I think that was 5 bucks. Also at Walmart, you're going to need some polyfill. And this you could find in the crab style, and I think that was 3 bucks. I also got some garbage bags here. I got the 33 gallons. You don't have to get the 33 gallons, but I find they're a little bit easier to stretch over some of the bigger mono tubs. Um, so I got the 15 bags, 33 gallons. I think that was six bucks, I think. Uh, also, we're, we're going to need, of course, hey, Breezy, you want to be on camera? There he is. He's getting so big. Um, we're going to need our uh, colonized substrate, of course. I got 14 cans here of uh, some good old-fashioned GTs. And uh, I do have a ton more, and I don't have enough mono tubs for all this, so we're gonna have to uh, add a little extra just to some of them. So no, no worries on that one. Um, I want to say I got bulk grain of this too, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think that's B plus. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump right on to over here. You guys want to see my vending machines? Pretty cool, huh? Uh, Anyways, I got one, two, three, four, five mono tubs of, I forgot what size these are. I can go ahead and look. 15 quarts. So I got five 15 quart mono tubs. And I got three 32 quarts. So these are these big ones down here. Lids, these are uncleaned. I do have to clean them before we uh, move ahead for the rest of this. Uh, additional things you're going to need is a huge pot to boil water, uh, enough to hold like four, uh, four or five gallons. 
because uh, this recipe is going to be a four gallon, four and a half gallon actually. We make it a four and a half gallon uh, water recipe. So you could go ahead and uh, you could split it up to in different pans, but uh, one of those uh, the big pots for uh, for cannon for bath and jo the jars or whatever that it's called. Uh, them are what I use, and I think they're about thirty bucks at Walmart. Um, and another thing you're going to need is a big uh, metal bucket you can get at like tractor supply or, or farm and tractor or whatever it's called. And that is a 28 gallon. I'll, I'll show you guys when I, when I get to uh, my parents' house, which is where all my stuff is at. And that cost me about $15, I think. So uh, it, it costs a little bit to get started with these bulk. But once you have everything, you can just reuse it all. I think it costs somewhere around a hundred bucks, I guess. That's my estimation. About a hundred bucks to get this really rolling. But uh yeah. Anyways, I'll meet you guys at uh at my parents' house, which is where I do all of my cooking. So I'll see you guys then. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're back at my parents' house. I've gotten the plaster of Paris. In four gallons of water here give it a nice stir and then we're gonna put this on heat it's gonna be on high and this will probably take about two to three hours it doesn't have to completely come to a boil um, but it has to get at least I can't remember what is it 160 or 190 somewhere like that I usually shut it off when the temperature reaches about 200 um, that's just me so anyways though guys I will see you in like three hours. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Water is all boiled. It's over 200 degrees right now. And we have our vermiculite and I cut the cocoa quarter blocks into two. And I'm sorry for the light in right now. Uh, so all that I'm gonna do is just gonna dump all of this stuff into here. Then I'm gonna wrap it with a bunch of towels. I'm gonna wrap it all up really nice. And I'm gonna put it in its own, uh, its own big tote. That way it kind of keeps the heat in there and I'm going to let it sit like that for 24 hours. So after I dump this in, actually I'll, I'll go ahead and dump some in for you so you can kind of see if I don't burn my hand on this. And just dump it all over. Uh, don't worry about mixing it up right now. After you, uh, you get all the water into here, it's really important to, after two or three hours or so, uh, mix it up so grab a stick or something like that and just go through and just kind of mix everything together make sure everything's all nice and mixed up so we're gonna let it sit like this now for three hours mix it up I'm not gonna show that on camera but uh, that's what I'm gonna do and then 24 hours from this exact time I will be taking these out so I'll see you guys then all right ladies and gentlemen here we are 24 hours later we have our substrate right over here. It's all very nice. Um, perfect moisture level. I used four gallons of water on it. If you guys hear any walking or anything like that, I'm at my parents' house and they are walking around. And um, so anyways, now we got that all straightened out. Here we have our colonized uh, 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 corn here. We're gonna move ahead and now we're gonna start prepping our mono tubs. So here you can see I have five of our, what are these, 15? Yeah, 15 quarts. I just gave them a quick little wash. Um, of course, we have these pre-drilled holes. I did these a while back. I think these are like two inches or something like that. So we're gonna go ahead now and we're gonna start lining these with trash bags. Now, trash bags I'm using is 33 gallons, just any generic type brand. So I'm gonna get these stretched on over here and I'll show you guys the result of that. All right, guys, now we got the bags on the mono tubs here and if you guys want a tutorial on how I put these bags on how I get these perfect seams down here um, and everything like that how to get a full 33 gallon bag into this without um, really anybody noticing that it's a 33 gallon bag uh, I'll make a separate video on that and uh, so I guess the next step would be to fill this up with our substrate so I'm gonna go ahead and fill these up to the level that I would I like and I'll be back and show you guys where we're at all right and here we are back with the five model tubs filled now I was gonna use the other bigger ones that you've seen earlier the 32 quart ones but 
I, I wanted to uh, really get this grow going and off the ground, so I'm sacrificing some of my harvest, which would probably be about four or five ounces, uh, just so I could speed this up a little bit, because my right now my grow room is backfilled, uh, and I uh, I need to get more more of my uh, substrate out of the uh, colonization tent and into the fruit and tent, because the fruit and tent is now empty. So I sacrificed a little bit. That's okay. Uh, we got five model tubs here. Uh, we could have had eight. Is it eight? Yeah, we could have had eight, but it is what it is. And we have 14 half pint jars of uh, our colonized substrate. And now we're going to be adding it in here. It's an uneven number, so we're going to do what we can to try to evenly disperse all of our uh, substrate over these. So I'll be back when I've covered all of these with our, um, our substrate. So I'll see you guys then. Alright guys, and here's how it looks with one jar in each of them. Now this is more than enough to colonize these bins here in about three to four weeks time. Um, and we still have a number of jars left over. We still got nine of them left over. So we easily could have made 14 mono tubs out of, uh, out of all this substrate. Like I said, we're taking a little bit of an L on um, how much we can actually grow, but this is going to grow quicker and it's going to let me be able to move along a lot of my other grows. Uh, so they're not waiting. So anyways, so guys, I'm going to go ahead and top off another jar in each one of these and I'll be back to show you what that looks like. All right, guys, and here's how they look after two jars in each one. So now we got one pound of substrate in each one of these. You guys want to see uh, Lil Breezy's mom? There's Lil Breezy's mom right there. Just chilling. All right back to this so i'm going to go ahead with the four remaining jars i'm going to go ahead and evenly distribute them throughout these and then we're going to be starting to mix these up so i'll see you in a second all right and here we are all 14 jars and five mono tubs here i feel really upset with myself that i didn't plan things better because we could have had 14 mono tubs here and uh, we probably could have a few pounds um, but you know what they say Anyways, we're going to go ahead and take the L like a man because I got 12 more monotubs worth of substrate that is fully colonized and ready for the, um, for the, 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 whatever you call it, the grow tent. Um, so uh, that's next week I'm going to be working on that. And, uh, right behind that I got like two or three more. No, man, I got like. 60 model tubs worth of substrate anyways it's going to be a long year for me so we're going to go ahead and mix these up just by hand just go ahead get our hands in here and we're going to mix them all up and stuff like that so i'll see you in a second all right and here we are with them all mixed up now it, it's important to remember try not to let all of the uh mycelium get to the bottom try to make sure that you have even distribution throughout the uh the whole box it's really hard to do but it is important because it will take you a lot longer and now another thing that i've never mentioned uh what you should do is before even putting in your substrate is it's a good ideal to poke little holes in the bottom of the the pan and that will help with drainage later on depending on how long uh your tubs are going to be sitting in there because they can develop mold uh while sitting so long because it will get very very wet on the bottom of these and uh, that's just one thing to look forward to, but with the amount of uh, substrate I put in these, uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem with this grow, but it's just something to look out for. Uh, and the only thing left to do now is to plug up our holes. We still have our holes here from our mono tub. Now, I'm not going to show you guys that on camera because that would be too tedious, and I know you guys hate it when I do that stuff. So, I'm just making a note of that. Cat, can you please get out of that box? Anyways... Uh, and I buy my mono tubs with these white lids and I do this for a reason um, so after these are fully colonized you're gonna cut just below where your holes are just below where these are and that'll leave a little gap right here so or right here I should point so light can get in and they can start the fruiting process now I have the white tops that way the light isn't directly on top of them which would dry it out it's coming in through the sides and that's why I get these ones with the white tops uh, because my uh, 
My grow light is very powerful. It's the Mars Hydro SP150. Uh, I do got a discount code in the description if you guys want to pick up one for yourself. So you don't have to. It's just the light I use. And it's a very powerful light, which is why I have to use the colored uh, caps on top of them because it will dry out. They will dry out very quickly too. So that's going to mark the end of this episode here. I'm going to go ahead and throw these caps on, throw our polyfill in the holes here. Uh, you don't have to put polyfill in the holes right now if you don't want to. I just find it helps later on. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it though, guys. I'm going to go ahead and label them caps too. Today is the 21st, I believe. And hopefully within two to three weeks here, these will be fully colonized and moved into our fruit and chamber or our fruit and tent. So I hope you guys like this video. If you do, make sure you hit the like button. And uh, until next time, keep on growing, keep on smoking, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See you later. Well, guys, and here we are a few days later. I know I cut that, the, the last part, kind of short, but I do want to show you guys this is three, yeah, three days uh, after. So this is three days into bulk colonization. And go ahead and check that out. We got some good growth going on here, guys. So I got some good plans for this uh, for this grow here, and of course we also we got tons more stuff coming, tons more. This isn't even all of it, guys. I still got like eight more bags, I think, of stuff left to uh, inoculate. So this is just the beginning, guys. We're gonna be growing bulk for uh, for days, I guess. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will catch you all later.